last video, we looked at the Opera House and its destruction by fire. And once the rest of the building was torn down, they had to rebuild and other buildings were put in its place. If you notice to the right of this picture, on the right wing where the Port Huron Savings Bank is, you see it was right next to the J.A. Davison Company that had the bay windows and then later Sears that had the bay windows as well. So it'll give you some uh, reference point when we look at the next picture. The three buildings just at the south of Sears were the buildings that replaced uh, where the Opera House was. The building we want to look at next is the one right next to Sears. This would have been uh, where the right wing of the Opera House would have been and the Port Huron Savings Bank. You can't quite make out what the sign says, but in this next photo you can. It was the Boston Restaurant, and the Boston Restaurant was there for a lot of years. It was there when J. Davidson was there, and it was also there when Sears was there. And if you look to your right, you can see that a taxi stand took up a part of this uh, restaurant as well. And at one time there was also a barber shop there instead of a taxi stand. The same photo was used in the Times Herald. Uh, the caption on this picture says, This 1925 photo of the Boston restaurant was once the Opera House in downtown Port Sharon. The building was bought by John Manis in 1921, who converted it to the restaurant. The business remained there until the 1950s, when Manis moved it to the current site at 10th and Union Street and renamed it the Tom Manis Restaurant. After the Boston restaurant, all state insurance was at this location. The next building we want to look at is just south of that, next door to where the Boston restaurant was, and that's this building right here. The business that was there at the most years is this business right here, Sturmer's Hardware. They were originally on Water Street, and they kept expanding. They were doing a great business. They added space to the Water Street, and then when the the Opera House burned down, they moved over there. It was an ideal location for them, actually a better location in the military than it was Water Street. Check out that phone number, 98. Sturmer's was owned by two brothers. Uh, there was Charles Sturmer, shown in this article from 1900. And then his uh, brother Richard Sturmer. And then this uh, brochure from 1900. It talks about uh, some of the finer points of their store, but at that time the store was on Water Street, so uh, we'll look at this material when we get to the Water Street address. But it also says that uh, Sturmer certainly carried a wide assortment of things, and that was true when I was growing up. I remember they had all kinds of hardware, nuts and bolts, and everything else like that, but he also had an entrance, or perhaps I should say an exit in the back, which was on Custom Alley. When you walked in that back door, it was like a farm supply store, perhaps like tractor supply is today. They had all kinds of good things for the farmer. And I definitely remember that, but for some reason it sticks in my mind. The signage out in front of the uh, Sturmers gives you a pretty good idea of the things they carried. And this is only a partial amount of the things that they carried. And it doesn't look like they're hurting for customers either. I'm not sure why the big crowd, other than the fact that this was taken in 1946 or 47. There could be some things came available that weren't available during the war. And as you look in the background here, you can see the Boston Restaurant, Sears, and then Barnett's beyond that. In this photo here, it looks like there's been an addition to their signage out front. You see the white sign saying Sturmer's Hardware. That wasn't in the previous uh, photo that we looked at. I always thought that Sturmer's had the nicest display windows of any hardware store I'd ever seen. This is taken around Christmas time, as you can tell from this uh, uh, display window of uh, the reindeers and Santa Claus. And as we move over to the other window that we can see is a Eureka vacuum cleaner display. In this night view of the first window that we looked at, we can see things uh, a little bit more clear. 
And we can see that there's also some toys displayed here. We, uh, the rocking horse uh, in the rear there on your left. And then there's uh, just below that there's a dowel. And as we go down along the front we can see there's another dowel. Uh, there's a uh, truck. Actually there's two trucks there. Another dowel and some uh, other uh, games or whatever. Looks like a tractor and you can see a train there. You can see the last car of the train anyway. Stormers would have been located uh, just about where the center section of the old opera house was. After Sturmers, the location was unoccupied for a while, and then Dave's went in there. Dave was uh, what they called at the time unclaimed freight store, which means that you come in and you could get really good bargains because uh, some of that freight wasn't claimed at the railroad station and so forth. I don't know how much of that was true or whether they uh, still went to that format later on, but when I was growing up it was. My dad and I always go in there looking for bargains. This is the second location that I'm aware of. Uh, originally Dave's was right across the street and uh, after this or later on it was down on Huron Avenue. Just next door south of uh, Dave's uh, was Spiegel Catalog Center. This is where the south wing of the Opera House used to be. Notice the facade on Spiegel's. I mean, pretty uh, bland there, but he had no idea what it covered up. It was a quite a unique uh, front that it used to have on it before they put that uh, facade on it. Let's take a look and see what it used to look like. This is what it used to look like when uh, Reynolds Jewelry Store was there, right next door to Sturmer's. And as you can see here, it has the, a, a sort of a diamond-shaped front. And uh, the top isn't straight across either, has a little design up there. You can't see the windows too good in this picture, but it had two oval win windows and then a, a longer window in the center. This picture is taken at dusk, but the signs are already lit, and you can see that it says jewelers quite plainly. You can't quite make out the other words, though. In this photo here, we get a pretty good look at the front, and it would appear to be uh, two different colored bricks, with the darker bricks being uh, making the design for the diamonds. And then on this oval window, you can see it has like a little balcony railing. It doesn't really have a balcony, but it, you know, just for appearance sake, they have this little railing around this oval window. And then in the center window, you can see this much larger window. You can't get a, a complete look at it, but it gives you an idea of what it looked like. All right, this is quiz time. For all those of you who have watched all my videos, who can tell me where Reynolds Jewelry Store used to be? You're right. It was in the first block just north of Military Street Bridge on the west side of the street. And you can see the signage here, Reynolds Jewelry Store, and you can also see the clock hanging out front. All right, that pretty well covers the stores that replaced the Opera House after it burnt down. And in this area right here, I told you, I think, at one time, of course, it was vacant after they tore it down before they built these buildings. And I found a, a postcard in my collection and after looking at it very closely, I realized that it's a picture of this block when the Opera House was torn down and no buildings have been built there yet. Take a close look. You can actually see the south side, the south wall of where Partnett Drugstore used to be. And then you can see the building uh, that was just at the south of the Opera House, but there was nothing in between in this photo. Pretty interesting. The building just to the south of the Opera House is this building here that you see in the dark red. And in this next picture, you'll see within the red uh, rectangle. As we come a little closer, it appears to be uh, one large building, but actually with four separate sections. You can see this roof line here with uh, the four separate pieces on the, on the roof line. And then as you go down, you'll see uh, these four sets of three windows, uh, both uh, on the second and the third floor. And down below, you had 
Below each set of three windows you had a store, at least on the first northern uh, two, and then uh, the two southern ones. Most of the lifetime of this building, the two were combined for uh, one business, so it was a larger store there. In the 1880s, gone all the way into the 1920s, uh, pretty much up until 1930, uh, this southern end of the building, the double address, the larger store, was occupied by Boy's Hardware. And you can see from this advertisement, uh, you can see the picture here of Boy's, and you can see the sets of three windows that I was talking about earlier. And if you look close, you can see the address on the awning, 923 and 925 Military Street. Boy's Hardware was in Port Sharon uh, a long time. It says here 66 years. Not always at this address, but it's a long time for any store. And it goes on to talk about the line of goods that they carry. Let's take a little closer look at Boy's Hardware windows. As we zoom in here on the left side, you can see that uh, we can make out that there's a couple of ranges there for sale. And then just to the left of the ranges, that light color object, that's an ice box. I think those two uh, items are probably the bread and butter. They probably sold a lot of those. Can't quite make out what's in the other window, but it looks like a few of the fancier things that they sold. But in this next photo, we can see very clearly some of the things that they sold that's in their window. Here we see their windows are trimmed for Christmas, and there's some pretty fancy looking gifts here that they're recommending for the folks to buy. And this is the window that's on the north side. Lots of things to choose from. And according to this Michigan Department of Labor uh, annual report, uh, it tells us here that uh, it was a pretty, pretty busy place because they had 13 employees, actually 14, 13 men and one woman. And uh, the only one that uh, looked like they had more employees, at least in this little section here, was Beard and Campbell. They had 16 employees with four being women. In this advertisement for Boys Hardware, you can see that they're trying to sell bench ringers. And they're saying how much more convenient a bench ringer is than a tub ringer. Look at the mess that the tub ringer is making. And here's their ad for granite uh, ironware. So it looks like they are real big into things for the kitchen. Her advertising was admired by the advertising community. Uh, this following article here uh, for this very ad that you're looking at now was written in the American Artesian uh, and Hardware Record of 1921. And it says uh, regarding this ad, brief and to the point is the wording of the advertisement of Boyce Hardware Company, reproduced herewith from the Port Huron Herald, Port Huron, Michigan. As it appeared in that paper, it measured six by six inches. Hence, the effect of the liberal margins was much greater than is evident in the reduced size. Warm kitchen in winter and cool kitchen in summer sums up the chief advantages of a combination range. By calling attention to the simplicity of operation, the argument in behalf of the combination range is conclusive. For the boys' hardware company, had taken up all the pages of one issue of the Porcher and Herald to tell the story of the favorite combination range. The text could not be clear or the facts better stated. 
and in the terse words of this advertisement. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering, what in the world is a combination range? Is that a microwave and a ceramic oven? No, actually, it was a gas stove. A gas stove that didn't throw out near as much heat as a wood stove. Wood stoves are great for the wintertime because they did provide heat, but in the summertime, they were wicked hot. And so what they're saying is that this can be adjusted. See, with these gas burners, you're just getting the heat from the burners. But in the wintertime, there's an adjustment you can make on it. So it's just like one of your coal ranges. And of course, the coal ranges would throw out the heat in the wintertime. Well, we didn't quite finish this location, but in our next video we will finish it, and perhaps we can get to the end of the block. Some other interesting buildings to be looked at.